Greetings from Pint Pot. Welcome to my latest edition of Climbing the Curve. The series intended to make you the hunter, rather than the hunted, a little quicker. Today we'll be taking a look at the various options for reinforced armour on tanks. This upgrade takes up the defence slot, and there are three types of reinforced armour, front, side and top. In game you can spot those using reinforced armour, because it looks very similar to a Sundra, like a series of steel plates have been welded to the side of a tank. And what does it do in practice? Each reinforced armour upgrade effectively allows you to take one more anti-tank shot on that particular piece of armour. So say on a prowler if you could take six shots on the side armour beforehand, with reinforced side armour you will now be able to take seven. But before I consider the various merits of this, I'll we'll just take a moment to consider how armour actually works in Planet Side 2. The armour in Planet Side 2 is effectively broken down into four separate sections, each covering 90 degrees. And these four quadrants constitute your front armour, right side, left side and rear armour. Now the principle is that you can take more hits on your front armour than you can on your side, and more hits on your side armour than you can on your rear armour. However, what constitutes a hit on your rear or side armour is not necessarily what you would anticipate. This is because, somewhat counterintuitively, when the game is judging which part of the armour of a tank you hit, it doesn't look at which part of a tank you actually hit with a rocket. Rather, it looks at where the rocket was fired from relative to the tank when the rocket actually hits the tank. So let me demonstrate. If I stand to the side of a tank and shoot it on the rear armour, it receives side armour damage. It doesn't matter I hit it on the rear armour because I was standing at its side. The same applies if I shoot from the rear and hit it on the side, but it still counts as rear armour damage. So what matters is where you're standing relative to the tank when the rocket actually hits the tank. I.e. if a tank moves, it can change which armour type it is that you hit. So let me demonstrate. I'm firing a Phoenix rocket at the rear of a Vanguard tank. The Vanguard turns so it hits its side armour. As I was standing to the side of the Vanguard when the rocket actually hits, it counts as side armour damage. The same applies if I fire at the side of a Phoenix and it turns its rear to me, when it hits the rear and I'm standing at its rear, it counts as rear damage. Now another case that demonstrates this is when I'm standing firing at this prowler. At the moment, I'm standing at its side, so it receives side armor damage. Shuffling a yard or two to my right, and now it constitutes rear armor damage. Now if I do this again, firing from the point to which it was side armor damage, but shuffling to the right where it would be rear armor damage if I fired from it, it still counts as side armor damage i.e. how the damage is calculated is based upon where the rocket was fired from relative to where it hits the tank, not where the person who fired the rocket is relative to the tank. So what in practice does this mean for gameplay? Well as an infantryman it's clearly advantageous to position yourself to the side of the rear when you fire at them. However the tank can mitigate the damage by swerving to absorb the damage on its stronger armour even after the rocket has been fired. This is because, say if you see an infantry firing at you and they are your rear, if you're quick enough about turning it and hits your side armour, it will count as side armour damage rather than rear and therefore do a lot less damage. Now this is difficult to do against tank shells because they're a lot faster than rockets, but heavy assault rockets are pretty slow and therefore it's perfectly possible to do this in practice. Which brings me back to where we started at the reinforced armour. And for reinforced armour there's one key question. Is it worth giving your defence slot for the ability to receive one more hit? And the answer is, though it's not a game breaker, it is actually a lot more useful than it might first appear on paper. When you're in a tank, the difference being able to take, say, four shots as opposed to six shots is enormous. This is because being able to take six shots buys you enough time to get out of combat in a way that four shots frequently wouldn't. Hence the reason why lightnings die so much more easily than main battle tanks, even though main battle tanks can only take one or two more shots than the lightning. This is because you've effectively got to take into account the chances of being hit by two rockets or tank shells in quick succession. And given the reload time of tanks and rockets, this effectively gives you four seconds to get out of combat if you can receive four shots, but eight seconds to get out of combat if you can receive six, and so on and so forth. Therefore, for a vanguard on its very strong frontal armour, its ability to receive 8 or 9 shots is vastly, vastly better than a lightning who can only receive, say, 6. Therefore, that one extra hit that reinforced armour gives you is actually pretty substantial. But which piece of reinforced armour to take? 
But one obvious advantage side armor has is it covers a total of 180 degrees of your surface area. This in comparison to only 90 degrees for reinforced frontal armor. Reinforced side armor also has the advantage that when you're in a tank duel, it effectively makes your side armor as strong as your frontal armor. This means you can maneuver more aggressively in a tank on tank battle because you don't need to turn your front armor towards the enemy as your side armor is just as strong. Now for certain tanks, I don't think this is incredibly useful, such as the Vanguard and the Prowler, because as a general rule, they don't tend to maneuver a lot around each other in tank on tank battles, but Mag Riders and Lightnings do. Therefore, when you're dueling in Lightning or a Mag Rider, I think Side Armor is a very useful upgrade. The other advantage Side Armor has, which applies to all tanks, is that when infantry are rocketing you, they will frequently flank to the sides. When they're doing this, it's very dangerous often to turn your frontal armor towards them because otherwise you'll be exposing your rear to another infantryman behind you. Therefore, reinforced side armor means that you don't have to do this and you still have the resilience of frontal armor. Now for the front armor upgrade, because it covers a lot less area than the side armor, I consider it to be much more situational. There are certain roads, particularly on Amorish, where it's so narrow you can't maneuver around them. In these instances, reinforced frontal armor can be very useful. Another example of where it can be useful is a prowler if it's under lockdown. This is because frequently you'll be at such a range that the only exposure you have to the enemy is on your frontal armor, and it can therefore buy time to get out of lockdown if you start receiving enemy fire. But as a rule of thumb, I'll be going for side armor rather than frontal armor. Now for top reinforced armor, it only becomes useful if someone's firing at you from a greater than 45 degree angle to the horizontal. In other words, unless someone's shooting down on you from the top of the tower, it's never going to be useful in tank on tank combat. Therefore, the only use I can see for this is on a lightning which has a sky guard. However, in my experience, the greatest defense for a sky guard versus being daltoned by a liberator is maneuverability. And when maneuvering, nanite auto repair might be a better option than reinforced top armor. Therefore, I really can't see the value of reinforced top armor as a general rule. So, in conclusion, reinforced armor has its uses, particularly side reinforced armor. It buys you that valuable time to get out of combat and repair your tank. However, I consider one of the major drawbacks is that it's not as an interesting upgrade as the alternatives. I find that running with stealth or proximity radar actively changes my gameplay. Running with reinforced armor, however, does not. However, it's a very solid upgrade and there's no real downside from taking it. It's also pretty cheap to pick up, particularly on main battle tanks. And particularly for mag riders, which expose their side armor a lot in tank on tank combat, I can see a lot of use in picking this up in the early game. Now my next episode, I'm gonna be taking a look at the stealth upgrade. If you found this episode interesting or useful, please feel free to thumbs up, thumbs down, comment, or subscribe as appropriate. In the meantime, have a good one, happy hunting, and pipe bot out.